Steam OS 3.2 is finally here and it has the updates we've been talking about for quite some time now and a few surprises as well. So we finally got the refresh rate update which means you can now select 40 hertz which is smack bang in the middle on the frame rate and frame time as 30 and 60. Although it doesn't seem it, that's the way the maths works. And this is a great addition if you want to be able to play those games a lot smoother for those games that definitely don't hold 60 frames per second. Another great addition is remote play together. This means that you can play the supported games and there's not far off 3000 of them to play together remotely on Steam Deck. So you can use any device that is compatible with Steam and for those compatible games you can use remote play together to do local co-op. This is an awesome addition to Steam and the Steam Deck in general, but is not all that we've got for you today. Also in the 3.2 update, they've added notifications to the Steam Deck SSD when there's less than two gig of free space so that you actually know when you are low on space before you try and install a game. They've improved the performance of the Night Shift keyboard theme and the ability to name controller layout command. So not only can you now rename the layout itself but the commands within it as well. They've also added icons for gamepad and mouse commands shown in the in-game virtual menus and fix being unable to connect to hidden wireless networks as well as fixing the time zone region for Saskatchewan. They've added the ability to close a window when running an application which has more than one. This has been quite annoying if you've seen this with the multi-tab switch you can't actually close one of those windows. And the nice little enhancement here for those using multiple accounts on their Steam Deck, you can now change your account from the power menu. That's not all though, they have been very hard at work on this update and it's great to see yet more fixes coming through, especially with the fan noise. Now I know there's been a lot of complaints about the fan spinning up a lot higher than it should do, but in this update comes in the OS controlled fan curve. So this will improve the experience, especially in low usage scenarios, and they can adjust the fan response curve accordingly so that it shouldn't be as loud all the time. They've also fixed an issue when typing the Euro key using the Steam keyboard, and the performance HUD now shows a more accurate reading of the VRAM. Apparently it would previously cap out at one gig, that's no longer going to be the issue. Now this one snuck in and I think this is absolutely awesome. I know a lot of people have been trying to use FSR with different resolutions and will also help when putting on external screens. You can now change the in-game resolution to all of the resolutions below 1280 by 800 as you can see here in Dying Light 2. Since that update I can now change the resolution to anything below the 1280 by 800 to wrap up then they fix gain staging resulting in higher speaker volume and removing the white noise when there's a 3.5mm headphone jack in use. And then they've also fixed Pipewire and Steam failing to elevate their thread priorities. Hopefully this is a kernel issue and will be a lot smoother going forwards. And one for the Warframe fans, they fixed the language drop down in the launcher. And micro SD formatting will now do a quick format instead of you waiting ages for it to do that initial format. If you haven't managed to format your SD card then do check out the video on the channel. Very quick and simple, we got a nice little guide for that. Let us know in the comments below if you're going to be using any of these features. I know a lot of people have been waiting for the refresh rate change and it's certainly something I will be using, especially when playing things like V rising which you can see in the background here as the frame rate can't hit 60 anyway getting that frame time down for the responsiveness is definitely more desirable have any of you used the remote play features on other systems before and are you going to be using it on steam deck let us know in the comments below i'm very intrigued to see if people are going to be using that one as always thanks for watching don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all things steam deck and we will see you next time